Hi, this is Mike from Minimal 3D Pay, and today I'm going to do a video on installing Clipper to a Raspberry Pi. Just a single instance, I've done multi-instance and all that. Most users are probably just doing a single instance. And last week I posted a video, um, link above, that was my long and detailed boring guide to installing Marlin, so I, I figured I'd sort of keep up with that and, and keep moving forward again with a long detailed guide uh, to doing Clipper and hopefully everybody finds this useful. Also I should mention um, I'd like if anybody has any thoughts about how this sounds let me know. I am struggling mightily with getting my sound uh, on my videos to sound consistent. Apparently I don't have good hearing and sometimes I, I can hear things some, sometimes not as well. And so again if you have any thoughts or ideas or, or suggestions I'm open to it. So let's go ahead and get started. Started with, uh, I have a Raspberry Pi 4 here. Um, if you're curious to what model you have, um, it's right here at the top. Like I said, mine's a model 4B, and I believe this has two gigs of RAM in it. Um, now you got this before uh, various chip shortages, so I'm, I'm lucky to have it. So let's go ahead and get started with um, installing everything. I already have a Clipper on here, but I'm going to go ahead and start from scratch. Now, there are numerous ways to go about installing Clipper, um, and then also the interface, such as Mainsail, Fluid, or even Octoprint. The easiest I found is to just use the Clipper installation and update helper. I think this script sort of takes care of everything for you. Also, with your Raspberry Pi or in your P on your PC, as noted in my previous videos, and I'll link that above, you can install multiple instances. I also like the fact, in, in the case of this script, I'm installing Mainsail, Fluid, and Octoprint. So that way I could test which one I like, do different things. I've also found that, particularly if I want to do some remote administration, Connecting to Clipper via Octoprint is pretty handy because of all the various tools. But then when I'm working in the house, I really like Mainsail. So again, this tool gives you the option to try different things. Now, right along with this, go ahead. And if I scroll down here, this mentions it's tested with Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Since it's been tested with Raspberry Pi OS Lite, I want to make sure that's what I start with. So the tool I'm going to use is the Raspberry Pi Imager. And so first thing I do is select operating system. And I'm going to go Raspberry Pi. I'm going to select Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. I'm going to choose my SD card. So I'm going to open up the advanced settings. And I want to set the host name. And I'm just going to type in Ray. So it'll be under 3.local. I want to enable SSH. I'm going to change the username. Well, I'll leave the username as Pi and add a password. Then I'm going to configure my wireless router. I'm going to change the LAN country to US. I'm going to set the locale. Hey. And then I want to go ahead and hit right. And this will take minutes to image the SD card. And I'll come back in a minute. So as you can see, Raspberry Pi Imager is finished. I'm going to hit continue. And I can take the image out of, so I've taken the image out of the machine. And now I'm going to go over the Raspberry Pi. Now, this is pretty simple. I just take the SD card. And I insert it into the Raspberry Pi with it turned off. Raspberry Pi is turned off. I'm going to go ahead and close it up. And then now I'm just going to go ahead and power the Raspberry Pi on the lights on. And this should take a minute or two to boot up. I've gone ahead and waited a minute or two, and my Raspberry Pi should be booted. And I'm just going to go ahead and SSH into it and then run a couple uh, configurations uh, options to go ahead to uh, 
to get everything straightened out. So I've gone ahead and let the Raspberry Pi boot. And now I've brought up my terminal window. In my case, since I'm on Windows, I'm using Windows Terminal. And I'm going to go ahead and SSH into the Raspberry Pi and make a couple configuration changes. Those configuration changes and, and do the install process is just SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So I left the username as Pi, and then I did it as ender3.local. And if this is configured properly, it should prompt me for a password. Yes, since this is my first time logging in. My password. So now I'm actually on the Raspberry Pi. And next couple steps will be updating the operating system and just making sure everything's configured appropriately. These couple steps are more of my best practices. So I'm going to type in sudo apt get update because I just want to make sure everything's up to date. So it might not be. So this will take a minute sudo apt get upgrade and there is a couple things here i need to update so i'm going to do capital y yes and let this update Since it's updated i'm going to go ahead and reboot the pi make sure everything is installed appropriately now one of the things i usually tell people is it's sometimes not a good idea to update the Pi after the fact. Once you have everything can, can installed and configured, because that might add some other issues. But I haven't, I, I periodically update all my Raspberry Pis and I've never had an issue. This looks like everything's installed appropriately. So I'm just going to pause and then I'll come back when it's done installing. All well, the updates have finished installing. Oh, just a, a couple of packages that I know. So I'm going to do sudo apt get install. And I'm going to do git and fmpegs used towards uh, the camera. And I've had issues in the past with that not being installed correctly. So I found just installed on the front end will help you when you're trying to configure the camera down the road. Oops, and then I'll just hit enter. So this is going to install a whole bunch of different pieces and parts. And again, I'll pause and let this install. So my two packages were installed. And let's just go ahead and reboot the Pi. So I do sudo reboot. And this will end my SSH session and then reboot the Pi. So I'm going to give it a minute to reboot and then SSH back into it and continue with my configuration. So I think I've given it sufficient time. And it's up arrow, it's like it's rebooted, so that's good. Now I'm going to paste in this command. So sudo raspi-config, go into the actual config. Now there's a whole bunch of different things you could change here. The one I do is I scroll down to advanced. So I'm using the arrow keys and then I use the space bar to select, or I'm sorry, select enter to do the options, to do the advanced options. And then I'm gonna go ahead and expand the file system. And that looks like that was accomplished appropriately. I'm gonna go down now to finish, go ahead and reboot the Pi. So again, my SSH session is closed and I'm gonna give it a minute or two. I believe I've given it sufficient time, so let's go ahead and SSH back in. So we're back in. You'll see the prompt down here at the bottom. Tell me which user I am. Again, the name of the device. And our next stop, couple steps are going to be installing where I'm sorry, cloning the uh, clipper 
install and update helper. So we're just going to start off by, let's run an ls to see what's there. There's nothing in my user directory. So let's type git clone and then switch over to the browser and get the proper URL. Get the URL, we just go to here to code, HTTPS, and we just hit copy. Switch back over to the terminal and paste that command in. So now I have git clone and the path to the repo for uh, the Clipper install and update helper. So that's gone ahead and cloned it. Let's hit LS again. And you'll notice the folder is listed right there. So let's go on to our next steps. So let's take a quick look at the browser. Scroll down here a little bit. And there is our command we need Install scripts. Let's just copy that over to our terminal, paste our command in. Now notice that nothing is installed, which is okay. And we're just going to go through step by step and install everything we need. In this install, I'm going to do one copy of everything, one instance, and then I'm going to go ahead and install Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail, Fluid and then Octoprint. I'm gonna leave Clipper Screen, Telegram Bot, and what used to be Obico, uh, used to be Spaghetti Detective. I'm gonna leave those not installed. I've noticed some errors with those periodically, and I just don't wanna mess with them right now. Hit number one for install, and number one for Clipper, and I'm gonna select the recommended version, which is Python 3. In one instance, so I'll hit enter and install whatever I need to make this work, and then also install Clipper. So I'll pause and come back when it's finished installing. Now, this install process probably took about five minutes, so just be aware it might be lengthy. There's a lot of different dependencies that need to be installed. Next prompt, it's asking me do I want to add my user uh, to the user group? to allow me to build and flash for my controller for my 3D printer. I wanna go ahead and hit yes, just to be on the safe side. And so I've gone ahead and I have Clipper installed. So now I'm gonna do Moonraker, so I'm gonna hit number two. Yes, for install Moonraker. And you'll notice that in this purple and bluish color list in all the dependencies. So those all need to be installed before Moonraker will work appropriately. So Moonraker is now installed and, and go to our next step and I'm gonna install Mainsail. So just hit number three. Luckily, as this progresses, I should have less and less dependencies that need to be installed. So the process I'm hoping gets a tiny bit quicker. Those first two steps again took about five minutes apiece. And I'm just going to let this run. Right now it's installing a web server and configuring everything. Next prompt, it's going to ask me if I want to install some sample macros. And I'm going to go ahead and hit yes. So main sales installed. I don't use Fluid, but maybe eventually I want to try something or there'll be a cool new feature I want to play with. So let's just hit four. Now notice main sale is on port 80. So if I go to this machine in my browser, go to http colon slash slash ender3.local, it'll bring up main sale. Now for Fluid, it can't use the same port. So what I'm going to do is just do port 81. Now, wait, let's do 82. That looks okay. And again, for Fluid, do I want to go ahead and install some initial scripts. Let's just hit yes. Done. Now, looking at all the other installs, I'm going to go ahead and install Octoprint. So I'll select number six. Yes. And that's installing. So now I have Clipper, Moonraker, Mainsail, and Fluid installed, as well as Octoprint. Now we have to make note of our various ports. 
main sale will be the default. So again, if I type in HTTP Ender 3.local, it'll bring up main sale. If I bring up Ender 3.local colon 82, it'll bring up fluid. And Ender 3.local colon 5000 will bring up Octoprint. So I have three different options using the same pie. So let me go ahead and show you this in the browser, just to make sure again, everything's working appropriately. So I'm gonna go HTTP colon slash slash ender three dot local. That should bring up main sale. As you can see, main sale is up and running. And we can go through and make changes to main sale. I'll run some updates and do anything we need. Let's go ahead and change our address to, I'm going to add a, add a colon and go to 82, and this should bring up Fluid. There we go. So Fluid is installed and running. And let's change that colon to colon 5000, and that should bring up Octoprint. There we go. So literally, we've installed pretty quickly and pretty easily those three different front ends to our Clipper install. We've done main sale, fluid, and Octoprint. And we can go through and configure these as appropriate. So in this video, we've gone ahead and done our installs on the Raspberry Pi. And now go ahead over and flash the minimalist uh, Clipper firmware on our 3D printer. I'll be honest, my 3D printer is currently printing right now on a long I'll let that finish before I go to the next steps. So I think I'll just do a separate video about flashing to the printer. In this video, we've covered how to install and configure everything on your Raspberry Pi. If you have questions, I want you to go ahead and put them in the comments or shoot me an email. I'm also going to go over to my website and try to type out a lot of these instructions. I'll put some stuff in the video description as well. If you like what I'm doing, please give me a like. Also, feel free to subscribe. I'd appreciate it if you have any feedback or comments, things I'm not doing well or things I could do better or and positive stuff as well. I really appreciate some actionable feedback. So again, this is Mike from Minimal 3DP. I appreciate your time. Hope you have a good day. Thanks.